My name is Chief Brad Duncan, and I'm Chief of the uh, London Police Service. Chief, thank you for your time uh, today. It's very important. Uh, we have the communication about the community consultation meetings that are coming up. What is this about? What is a consultation well, meeting? Community consultations are part of a uh, broader uh, process that we're engaged in in terms of business planning. So every three years, the London Police Service writes a business plan, and in that plan, it sets goals and objectives for the service for the next three years. So. The public consultations are very, very important because we need to hear from the public about the issues that they may have in their neighborhoods. It could be broader issues across our community, but it's really about receiving input so that we can have some sense of where the public wants us to go in the future. Uh, and so we uh, send out not only notices of our public consultations, but we also send out 4,000 public needs surveys to various community members really looking for information. As I've said many times, uh, we police the community based on what the community tells us their needs are. And so it's really, really important for us to have members of the community come into the consultations, uh, and we expect there'll be a lot of uh, uh, diverse uh, questions for us and a lot of probably diverse topics. And so what we do at the end of the consultations, we, we, it takes us about three months, and we put all the information together and we look for themes. And so, uh, for instance, uh, in other years, traffic has been a theme, or uh, concern about youth crime has been a theme. And once we know these themes are arising, now I can put my resources to it. So it's a, it's a real important process, uh, because we really act on behalf of the community. Uh, when you say about the inputs, uh, can you give us some more ideas about the input? You uh, absolutely. So, we, so I usually, at the beginning of a public consultation, I'll kind of give an overview of the police service, tell them what we're doing now, uh, for instance, recently we know that the public has, has, are aware of gang activity and there's been a lot of questions around gangs in London. So I would expect at the public consultation, if you lived in a neighborhood where you suspected there might be youth issues or gang activity, you'd want to raise that at, at the at public consultation. If we hear those kinds of consistent themes, then we know that that's an issue. I mean, obviously, we know as a police service that there are, are, there's gang activity, but maybe not to the extent in some neighborhoods. So that's important for people to come in and say, well, we have an issue in our neighborhood. I'll give you another example. I've been at public meetings and individuals have said, I think we have uh, a grow up in our neighborhood. In other words, marijuana is being grown in houses. So that information comes up. Now, that might not be part of our business plan, but we'll certainly act on that information. And we've, so we've had po positive results for that. So, um, you know, the input could be uh, maybe not, not global in nature. It could just be a small community issue. So some of those issues we'll deal with simply by recording them. I'll give them to the various areas, whether it's uniform division or it could be investigative services to take care of it. But the broader kinds of issues, those are the ones that we, uh, that we look at. And, uh, and that's why right now sitting here, I can't tell you exactly what those issues will be because I want to hear from the community. But in the past, we've heard about youth crime, we've heard about traffic issues, um, we've heard about uh, uh, drugs in neighborhoods. So th those are probably going to be consistent themes, but uh, we don't know until we actually get into the consultation. That's why it's so important to hear from the public. The cross-cultural communication, all the cultural barriers are there. You can call to a consultation and people can give you whatever input you're looking for, but they will say, what about programs and services? What are you planning to do with this? Absolutely. And uh, so we do have a diversity officer, uh, Constable Marcellin, who uh, is, is, is our, our outreach point person. So obviously uh, when issues arise and individuals are looking for presentations from the London Police, for instance, Marcel would be the individual to, uh, to go through. Um, but we offer many, many services to the, the entire community. So for instance, if people knew the community want to know about the police services, we can come out to community meetings. Uh, we, we come out to community, the community meetings that we're doing for the business plan is specific, but uh, I'm, I'm asked all of the time to come out to different groups, whether it's, it's rotary groups or community groups. So within our Spanish community, if there's uh, individuals who say, you know, I want to know more about our police service, I want to know more about, for instance, I have, I have sons and daughters who are interested in policing. How do I go about giving them the information that they need? So we, we're very open to, to do that. Uh, oftentimes we'll have people with issues around crime prevention. For instance, they've moved into a new house or into a, into a new apartment or a condominium or wherever they've moved. They want to make their environment safer. We have officers here that will go out and give them ideas about how to make that environment safer. So there's lots of opportunities. Uh, the biggest thing that people have to do is ask. They have to ask us. And uh, clearly, if language is a barrier, we do have a number of officers within our service that do, do speak Spanish. 
Um, and so that uh, we know that especially when people are very new to the city with limited uh, ability to speak English, that's why we rely on either our police officers or interpreters that we'll, we'll call to the scene, uh, wh whatever that might be. So there's lots of opportunities for us to, uh, to uh, speak to those communities and to help them understand uh, uh, our role. And, and the other thing we find too, oftentimes depending where um, th the individual comes from, their view of policing from whatever country they came from can be very, very different than here. And we know that often people uh, come to our community from uh, countries where, uh, you know, police officers may be corrupt, uh, they're aligned to political factions, whereas here we are independent, this is a democracy, and police are independent from the political process. And so that's, that's sometimes very hard for people to understand, so we have to break down those conceptions because at the end of the day, we're here to serve the public very different in some other countries, right? And so we understand that. If you look at our cruisers, many of our cruisers have police in various languages, including Spanish, is on the side of our cars. The reason why we do that is we want to demonstrate that we're inclusive. And so this policing model is, is very different from what some people are used to. So what Marcel does, and, and actually even our, our media officer, uh, we, we work at making sure people understand that, that you can approach us, you can speak with us, don't let the uniform um, uh, and so I won't say the word scare you, but don't let the, the uniform um, prevent you from speaking to a police officer because it's very different here in Canada. That's correct. I believe uh, trust is one of the most important issues or pressing issues from our community with the police uh, department. Trust, right? Not because there is a background already here, but rather from our, the, your own countries. But in speaking of diversity in, uh, among the police uh, department, uh, what efforts are, is the police uh, doing? in terms of recruiting? Well, diversity has been, I've been chief for a little over a year. Um, when I became chief, uh, you know, we've been, we've been looking at diversity for a number of years, but I made it part of my uh, platform coming in that we, we need to hire uh, from our diverse communities. You have to be representative of the communities that you serve. That's, that's how policing should be conducted. So uh, we certainly are open, and again, it's about individuals asking us about the recruitment process. So obviously we have a website and which, which clearly indicates uh, uh, what uh, the, the ways to become a police officer and how we recruit here. But we've also started a very interesting program here. Uh, Marcel is actually uh, mentoring diverse members who show an interest in policing. And so these are individuals, it's not simply a, a passing interest, but they come in and say, I'm, I'm very interested in becoming a police officer. And so Marcel will take that individual and give them a tour of, of the department, speak to them so they understand what, what, their, uh, what their involvement will be in terms of policing. So this has been working. Uh, we just had one uh, recruit go through that uh, process. And so it's helpful because um, you may think you understand what police work is. Um, we all watch TV shows. Well, that's not how things work in the, in the, in the real world. Uh, so that's, that's a process too. And we also have information nights. Uh, our recruiting office here is open uh, Monday to Friday, so if an individual wants to make an appointment, it's, I would just like to talk to a recruiter. I'd like to know uh, what we do. And, and the other thing we do here, which is uh, not every police service does, but we have a cadet program. And so individuals can come into the program as a cadet. So you'll see them in, on, they'll have a, a uniform like a regular police officer, but they have cadet bars on the top. So they're not armed, um, but they, they work in our court cells and our cell block here. And, uh, and they work in, in the fingerprinting area, and they work for about two years. And that gives us an opportunity to see the cadet, the cadet to get a sense of policing, and many, many cadets then become police officers. So that's another route, not, mm -hmm. not necessary. And so that's good for the, the individuals. For, you see, our hires are about 27 years of age is the average hire when you look at, at, at the age that we hire. So individuals who are 21 or 22 um, not, might not get right into policing simply because they haven't got a lot of life experience. But the cadet program is a great way for them to, to see what, what it's like to be a police officer. And we have 22 cadets, so the movement each year on, in that area. So I'm very open to recruiting, and, and certainly within our Spanish community, uh, if there are groups that would say, can you come out and speak to the youth? Uh, absolutely, we would do that. To, to, I, I encourage it because we need to, we need to start at that age. You need to put it in the minds of, of kids when they're 14 and 13, is this a career path? Because we also want them to be good corporate citizens. I mean, obviously, to be a police officer, you have to be. 
And, uh, but it, more importantly, you can start talking about education and focusing your mind. Volunteerism is big uh, in terms of being a police officer. So, yeah, we, we, I would really encourage members of the Spanish community, if, if parents have, have kids uh, that are indicating that they want to become police officers, then we would be delighted to, uh, to help that process. How would you describe the relationship between the police department and the Hispanic community right now? Well, I hope it's a good relationship. I haven't heard otherwise. Uh, and, uh, and again, that's uh, why uh, we have a, a, another uh, area in our, in our service, which is the community-oriented response unit. And this, what we call it the core unit. Uh, and they address neighborhood issues. So uh, with, uh, with our Spanish uh, members within our community, if there are issues within that community, whatever, I don't know what they could be, but there may be issues that arise. Um, and, uh, and they need some assistance with the police, that's one of our groups that will go out and try to establish what the issue is. And so they're very much uh, into a lot of different neighborhoods. And uh, so I would hope that, uh, not, not having heard any negative aspects, uh, but I would hope that people would feel comfortable uh, if they felt that there was an issue with the police or a police officer, um, they need to bring that forward because uh, that's the only way that you can deal with it. If we don't know about it, we can't deal with it. And uh, so that's, that would be very important for people to feel comfortable to come forward, pick up the phone, ask the questions, and we'll deal with it when we, when we find out what the issue is. Now, during the community consultation meetings, uh, uh, we know that you are calling upon uh, all citizens, uh, including business owners, uh, associations, church groups, volunteer agencies, community organizations. Uh, what mix are you looking for? Uh, you're looking for a number of specific people, uh, different angles to be represented? Well, I, I hope we get dozens and dozens of people. I mean, in the past we've had consultations, and one of the reasons why we brought it central to the police station is we used to do the high schools, so we go through various high schools, and you would get smaller amounts, uh, and uh, which was fine, but uh, uh, I think there's a lot of uh, benefit when you have a larger group listening to what others in the, in the group are talking about, so everybody gets a sense of what the issues are, so I'm hoping we have a very, very good turnout. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm not putting any parameters on what people can bring to the meeting. Uh, I, I'm not saying you can only speak to us about this. Uh, I start the consultation with a little overview. I kind of give people a sense of what the service is like uh, and, and what programs we offer. I also tell people, you know, this is what we did after the last consultation. Here's some of the themes that came out. So they have a sense of, of that. And uh, so it's basically a wide open forum. Uh, I have myself, uh, my two deputies, and some of my senior command. Uh, because some of the questions may be more appropriately answered. For instance, it could deal with traffic. So I'll have one of my traffic uh, uh, commanders deal with that, uh, that issue. But I, I don't want it to, people to come in and say, well, I can only talk about this, I can't talk about this. Um, I'm clearly, we're, we're not looking for people to demonstrate at the public consultations. I'm dealing with that already this week. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, a respectful dialogue. That's what we're looking for. Bring your issues forward. Uh, and as I said, we've had them that are, that are small issues. And oftentimes, we can deal with them. They don't really become part of our business plan because they're, they're not large enough. But we will deal with them. So we record what's being said, not in terms of taping it, but we make notes about what people are, are asking us about. And oftentimes, um, we will have people approach us afterwards. We leave forms. So if people have, and I tell them, if you have a specific neighborhood issue or a specific issue that's not, that you may not want to have brought up, not everybody wants to raise their hand or stand up. I mean, some people are... Are, are shy or reluctant. So we give an opportunity to still put their information on a piece of paper with a, with a phone number and ad, if they want us to contact them, we do. And probably we get it on the average about 40 or 50 of those requests and then we follow up on them. So you don't necessarily, I mean even if you may be reluctant to uh, raise your hand or stand up, please still come to the meetings and listen because uh, there's other ways that your voice can be heard.